One of the most memorable moments during the ceremony was the reception President Ndaishimie of Burundi received from the crowd. Enthusiastic cheers, chants of his name, and expressions of solidarity resonated throughout the stadium, emphasizing the strong bond between Burundi and the DRC. Excellence, Monsieur Evariste Ndaishimie, President de la République de Burundi. À gauche, présenté. Les Burundis qui venaient de signer des accords militaires avec la RDC. Les Burundis qui ont toujours soutenu la RDC pendant cette période difficile et qu'elle traverse avec cette agression dont elle est victime de la part du Rwanda. Les Burundis ne partagent pas, alors pas du tout, la, le point de vue ou la vision euh, du Rwanda euh, qui agresse la République démocratique du Congo. Regardez comment le président burundais est ovationné ici, au niveau, au niveau euh, du stade de martyr. Euh, le président Evariste Ndaïchimie euh, qui vient d'arriver. Evariste Ndaïchimie qui dirige le Burundi, euh, qui est un pays voisin de la République démocratique du Congo. Ndaïchimie, nous l'avions dit, a toujours apporté un appui considérable à la République démocratique du Congo. Alors, ovationné par le public, comme le, il le montre, il est, il est vraiment aux aguets. Hein. Il est très content. Evariste Ndaïchimie. Kinshasa, là c'est notre chef d'État qui arrive, Blaise Bukokia. Nous allons le découvrir. Oscar, Joseph Oscar Mbaïge, pardon, nous assistons à un véritable ballet diplomatique, très chers téléspectateurs. C'est des moments rarissimes euh, au niveau de notre pays. Depuis un certain temps, on n'a jamais connu, hein, on n'avait plus connu euh, ce genre de ballet diplomatique. Euh, Aujourd'hui, ces chefs d'État ont effectué le déplacement de Kinshasa pour participer à l'investiture du président de la République, Félix-Antoine Tshisekedi de Chilombo. C'est un bon signe. Ce qui prouve à suffisance que la RDC en fait bien. This warm reception can be attributed to Burundi and Ndaishimiye's substantial assistance in the DRC's ongoing battle against the M23 rebel group. The Congolese population, grateful for this support, took the opportunity to express their appreciation for the collaborative efforts in ensuring regional security. President Ndaishimiye's presence symbolized friendship and shared objectives in the fight against common threats. The solidarity displayed at the event reinforced the diplomatic ties between the two nations. It highlighted the importance of regional collaboration in addressing security challenges. However, the absence of Rwandan President Kagame did not go unnoticed. The DRC has openly accused Kagame of contributing to insecurity in the eastern DRC, particularly about the activities of the M23 rebel group. Dr. Congo, Felix Chizekidi, takes oath in spectacular state De Martyr's ceremony, a proud moment for Africa, Shisekedi's swearing-in ceremony at the Stade de Martyr. Today marks a historic and proud moment for the Democratic Republic of the Congo, RD Congo, as President Felix Shisekedi was sworn in for his second term. The ceremony, held at the iconic Stade de Martyr in Kinshasa, not only captivated the nation, but drew the attention of more than 20 African presidents who gathered to witness this significant event. The Stade des Martyrs, a symbol of resilience and strength, witnessed the solemn swearing-in ceremony, underscoring the democratic traditions and stability that Chisekedi and RD Congo aim to uphold. The presence of over 20 African heads of state added a continental significance to the occasion, emphasizing the need of unity and collaboration among African nations. The participation of these African leaders reflects the collective pride in witnessing the peaceful transfer of power and the reaffirmation of democratic principles in one of Africa's largest 
and most affluent countries. The Stade des Martyrs, filled with an air of celebration and anticipation, echoed the shared aspirations for progress and prosperity across the continent. President Chizakedi's second term is seen as an opportunity to build on the achievements of his first term and address the challenges facing RD Congo. The diverse representation of African leaders at the swearing-in ceremony symbolizes the solidarity and support extended to Chizakedi as he embarks on another leadership term. The ceremony was not only a testament to RD Congo's commitment to democratic values, but also showcased the rich cultural diversity and vibrant spirit of the African continent. The Stade des Martyrs, witnessing this momentous occasion, became a focal point for celebrating Africa's resilience and progress. As the cheers reverberated through the stadium and the leaders exchanged greetings, it was evident that this event transcended national boundaries. It became a collective celebration of African achievements, emphasizing the potential for collaboration and cooperation to address shared challenges and propel the continent forward. In conclusion, the swearing-in ceremony of President Félix Chisakedi at the Stade des Martyrs stands as a proud moment for RD Congo and Africa as a whole. The presence of numerous African presidents highlights the unity and shared vision for a prosperous and democratic Africa. As RD Congo enters a new chapter under Chisakedi's leadership, the continent looks forward to witnessing the positive impact and contributions to the collective advancement of Africa. Felix Chisakedi was officially sworn in for his second five-year term during an impressive ceremony at the Stade des Martyrs de la Pentecôte. The Constitutional Court presided over a solemn public hearing on Saturday where the head of state received the symbols of power from the High Court before delivering his inaugural speech. The event was highlighted by a military parade and a salute of 21 cannon shots. The investiture ceremony captured global attention with the participation of approximately 30 foreign delegations, including 10 led by heads of state. Among the distinguished figures present were President Hakainde Hichilema of Zambia, President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa, the President of Ghana, the President of Gambia, the President of Zimbabwe, the President of Kenya, the President of Congo, Brazzaville, the President of Chad, the President of the Central African Republic, the President of Angola, Umaro Sissoko Mbalo of Guinea-Bissau, Theodore Obiang Nguema of Equatorial Guinea, Maki Saul of Senegal, the Vice President of Namibia, former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta, the Presidents of Djibouti and Malawi, and President Everest Ndaishimiye of Burundi. African leaders unite in support of Chisakedi, diplomacy, solidarity and challenges. Today, the swearing-in ceremony of President Felix Chisakedi at the Stade des Martyrs in the DRC witnessed a remarkable presence of leaders from across the African continent. The presence of nearly half of Africa's presidents underscored the high regard for Chisekedi. It showcased the diplomatic successes of his government. This collective support is a pivotal factor in Chisekedi and the DRC's ongoing efforts to confront challenges posed by neighboring countries, particularly Rwanda, and address the persistent threat of Kagame's rebel group, M23. The unity displayed by African leaders signals a potential turning point in the regional dynamics as Shizakedi seeks to strengthen stability in the DRC. One of the most memorable moments during the ceremony was the reception President Ndaishimiye of Burundi received from the crowd. Enthusiastic cheers, chants of his name, and expressions of solidarity resonated throughout the stadium, emphasizing the strong bond between Burundi 
and the DRC. This warm reception can be attributed to Burundi and Ndai Shimiye's substantial assistance in the DRC's ongoing battle against the M23 rebel group. The Congolese population, grateful for this support, took the opportunity to express their appreciation for the collaborative efforts in ensuring regional security. President Ndai Shimiye's presence symbolized friendship and shared objectives in the fight against common threats. The solidarity displayed at the event reinforced the diplomatic ties between the two nations. It highlighted the importance of regional collaboration in addressing security challenges. However, the absence of Rwandan President Kagame did not go unnoticed. The DRC has openly accused Kagame of contributing to insecurity in the Eastern DRC, particularly about the activities of the M23 rebel group. Kagame's non-participation in the ceremony raises questions about diplomatic relations between neighboring countries. As Chizakedi embarks on his second term, the notable support from fellow African leaders offers a potential foundation for regional cooperation and stability. The ceremony's significance extends beyond the symbolic oath-taking, serving as a platform for diplomatic discussions and collaboration in addressing shared challenges focusing on the ongoing efforts in the Martia ceremony, diplomacy, strained relations and regional dynamics. In a powerful display of strength and national pride, the Stade de Martia hosted today's ceremony, attracting over 80,000 enthusiastic Congolese. The event not only marked a significant moment for the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC, but also provided an opportunity to showcase the country's size and prosperity. However, for a Rwandan observer, the occasion was tinged with disheartenment, emphasizing the reception accorded to President Ndaishimiye in Kinshasa. This divergence in treatment underscores the consequences of being perceived as a problematic neighbor on Kagam's part and a cheerful neighbor on Ndaishimiye's part. The Stade de Martyr ceremony, while a celebration for the DRC, serves as a poignant reminder of the complex web of diplomatic relationships in the region. The absence of Kagame speaks volumes about the repercussions of misguided strategies and attempts at influence. Kagame's absence becomes more pronounced against the warm welcome extended to President Ndai Shimiye. The crowd in Kinshasa expressed their support and solidarity, emphasizing the positive dynamics between Burundi and the DRC. This warm reception is rooted in the significant assistance provided by Burundi and Ndai Shimiye in the DRC's fight against rebel forces, notably the M23. As a Rwandan, witnessing the strained relations unfold at such a monumental event is a sobering experience. It highlights the need for astute diplomacy and respectful neighborly interactions. The DRC's vibrant showcase of strength and unity becomes a mirror reflecting the consequences of diplomatic missteps and the potential for constructive regional collaboration. The Stade des Martyrs ceremony is more than a national celebration. It becomes a stage where diplomatic narratives play out. The absence of Kagame and the warm welcome for Ndai Shimiye encapsulate the nuanced relationships between countries, emphasizing the importance of diplomacy in fostering regional harmony. This momentous occasion holds significance for the Congolese people, the entire Great Lakes region of Africa, and the continent as a whole. The Democratic Republic of Congo, on its path to democracy and development, has become a beacon for progress that extends beyond its borders. As the DRC thrives, so does the entire region and the continent of Africa. The inauguration of President Chizakedi signifies a commitment to democratic values and economic growth, setting a positive trajectory for the nation and its neighbors.
The importance of peace and security in the DRC cannot be overstated, as it directly translates to peace, security and freedom across the Great Lakes region of Africa and the entire continent. A stable and prosperous DRC contributes to the well-being of neighboring nations and fosters a climate of cooperation and shared growth. The celebration of President Chisakedi's re-election echoes the aspirations of the Congolese people for continued progress, stability and prosperity. It is a testament to the collective will of the nation to uphold democratic principles and strengthen the foundations of good governance. The rallying cry of Vive le peuple congolais, Vive la RDC libre et Vive l'Afrique libre resounds with the spirit of freedom and unity. It encapsulates the shared vision for a free and thriving Congo, contributing to the larger tapestry of an emancipated and prosperous Africa. As President Chisakedi embarks on his second term, the hope is that the momentum of development, peace and democracy will only intensify. The inauguration serves as a symbol of continuity, resilience and the unwavering commitment to building a good future for the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo and Africa as a continent. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya, Son Excellence Mahamat Idris Déby, President of the Republic of Chad, Son Excellence Brice Olingi Nguema, President of the Republic of Gabonaise. Nous accueillons également Madame Jiska Aloupa, vice-présidente de la République d'Ouganda. Son Excellence le Docteur Angolo Mbumba, vice-président de la République de Namibie. Son Excellence Madame Shen Yuhe, vice-président du Sénat de la République populaire de Chine. Nous accueillons l'honorable Adama Bitogo, président de l'Assemblée nationale de la République de Côte d'Ivoire. Son Excellence Valdimir Orly, président de l'Assemblée nationale de Serbie. Monsieur Rachid Talbi El Alami, président de la Chambre des représentants de Sa Majesté le Roi Mohamed VI. Docteur Hussein Ali Mouini, président du gouvernement révolutionnaire de Zanzibar, la République unie de Tanzanie. Monsieur Jacques Ayaki Kouete, ancien président de la République unie du Nigeria. Monsieur Tulishile Diada, Premier ministre du Royaume du Swaziland. Son Excellence Ole Sugun Obasanjo, ancien président de la République fédérale du Nigeria. Nous accueillons également M. Rajadri Mamkanina, Henri, ancien président de Madagascar. Nous accueillons Son Altesse Chak Chakbout Nayan, ministre d'État aux Affaires étrangères des Émirats Arabes Unis. Nous accueillons M. Luca Abagian Chana, ministre des Affaires étrangères, représentant de la République de Guinée équatoriale. Son Excellence Dr Pitya Morgan, ministre des Affaires étrangères et de la coopération internationale, représentant du Soudan du Sud. Son Excellence Kagiso Thomas Msi, ministre de la Défense et Sécurité, représentant de la République du Botswana. Nous accueillons également M. Scott Nathan, directeur général de la Société américaine de financement et de développement et envoyé spécial du président Joe Biden des États-Unis. Nous accueillons également M. Dollar Amchi de Lord Popat, envoyé spécial de Sa Majesté le Roi de Grande-Bretagne. Madame Anita Vandenberg, secrétaire parlementaire du ministre du Développement international, représentant le Canada. Nous accueillons M. Ambassadeur Carlos Sergio Sobral Duarte, secrétaire pour l'Afrique et le Moyen-Orient de la République fédérative du Brésil. Some people may not see success as stretching with cats, but they don't see that I also stretch my money. My secret move is to have a business bank account with QuickBooks money. It earns me a market leading 5% APY that puts my cash flow in the best position. Dans du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement. 
l'ambassadeur Bancolé Adioye, commissaire chargé des affaires politiques, paix et sécurité de l'Union africaine. Monsieur Gilberto de Piedra de Verissimo, président de la commission de la communauté économique de l'Afrique centrale. Et enfin, Monsieur Mbelambela, ministre des relations extérieures de la République du Cameroun. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République, chef de l'État, avec l'expression de nos hommages les plus déférents. Excellence, Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, Mesdames et Messieurs les chefs de délégation, distingués Premières Dames, honorables invités, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers compatriotes, bienvenue à Kinshasa, capitale de la République démocratique du Congo, et plus particulièrement au Stade des Martyrs de la Pentecôte. Les Quinois sont fiers et heureux de vous accueillir et souhaitent à toutes et à tous un excellent séjour dans notre belle capitale à l'occasion de l'investiture de son excellent Félix Antoine Tshisekedi Chilombo, président de la République, chef de l'État. Cette cérémonie revêt pour nous, Congolais, une saveur toute particulière. Tenant tant au nombre qu'à la qualité de ses invités et participants. Cette cérémonie nous offre aussi, à nous, Congolais, l'occasion de réitérer notre attachement à celui qui présidera aux destinées de notre cher et beau pays pour les cinq prochaines années. Excellences, Monsieur le Président de la République, chef de l'État, Excellences, Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, Mesdames et Messieurs, Distingués invités, honorables invités, chers compatriotes. L'investiture d'un président de la République est un événement très éclairant et spécifique de la vie politique et démocratique dans notre pays. Cet événement survient systématiquement après la fin de la campagne pour l'élection présidentielle consacrant la victoire d'un candidat. L'investiture officielle du chef de l'État est un rite de création qui, à la manière d'un symbole puissant, assure et matérialise la continuité du pouvoir républicain au-delà des clivages politiques. Le rite de création constitue un invariant anthropologique à l'échelle de l'histoire de l'humanité, puisqu'à toutes les époques, les hommes ont ressenti le besoin de recourir à des dispositifs mettant en évidence la stabilité d'un État et un certain sens du décorum. Les rituels constituent des dispositifs sociaux dans lesquels il y a création d'ordre et de hiérarchie par le biais d'une action sociale commune et qui produit du sens. Aujourd'hui, en ce jour si chargé d'histoire et de symbole. Le peuple congolais, dans son infinie diversité, s'honore de pouvoir confier son destin à celui qu'il vient de porter à la magistrature suprême pour la deuxième fois consécutive. Fort d'une vision globale qu'il aura à cœur de consolider à travers ses précieux acquis de son premier mandat. Une ère nouvelle s'ouvre pour la République démocratique du Congo et son peuple. Une page inédite se tourne dans son narratif à la faveur d'un nouveau serment dont nous sommes aujourd'hui les témoins privilégiés. À présent, je vais donc demander au protocole d'État de pouvoir procéder à l'ouverture solennelle de la cérémonie d'investiture du président de la République. Je vous remercie. Excellences, Messieurs le Président de la République, avec l'expression de nos hommages les plus différents. 
la très distinguée première dame, Madame Denise Nyakeru Tshisekedi. Leurs Excellences, Messieurs les chefs d'État, avec euh, l'expression de nos hommages les plus différents. Mesdames et Messieurs les chefs des deux délégations étrangères, avec euh, l'expression de nos hommages très distingués. Honorable Président de l'Assemblée nationale, Honorable Président du Sénat. As we conclude this episode of News of Africa, we want to express our gratitude to our valued viewers and subscribers who make our channel thrive. Your support fuels our commitment to delivering insightful content, fostering dialogue, and shedding light on the issues that shape Africa's narrative. If you found this video informative and engaging, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to News of Africa to stay connected with our ongoing coverage. Your participation in this journey means the world to us. Until next time, stay informed, inspired, and connected with Africa's heartbeat. Thank you for being part of our community.